Hi, I'm Dr George Hoare and I'm the Academic Director here at Oxford Summer Courses. I studied at Oxford both as a graduate student and before that as an undergraduate. And in my role as Academic Director, I try to bring the best of my experience at Oxford to all our students. At Oxford Summer Courses, we use the same teaching methods as the university itself. At the heart of this is the tutorial, a one hour one-to-one -one session, often with a world expert, where the student can explore and engage with their subject in a far deeper way than would be possible in a large group setting. I bought the apples at the store. I had to pay for the farmer to grow the apples, the farmer to get the seeds, the di distributor to bring the seeds to the farmer. These are organic ones, so it's not pesticides, but some special fertilizers that I'm paying for when I, when I buy that. I'm paying for the cellophane, that, that is a number of jobs. I'm paying for the designers on the, la the labels and the coloring. So the money goes for that, it pays for the cardboard, it pays for the, the pilot to fly these things, or the, or the truckman, yeah, it pays for insurance, it helps to pay for the light, uh, not only where the, where the farmer is maybe doing things in the greenhouse, but paying for the light in, in the factory to produce the cellophane and, and the cardboard, okay? Yeah. So from one simple act of, of buying something like that, it creates all kinds of jobs and that's what helps develop an economy. And when those people then have money in their pocket from their salaries, they're going to be buying things too, I need. The course also includes a variety of guest lectures from a range of Oxford's most exciting researchers. This is because we believe that students should engage with subjects other than the one that they're primarily interested in. Nuclear fusion is possibly the most powerful energy source available to us at the moment. It is what fuels the sun, it is the combining small atoms into big ones, and that releases the energy that fuels it. It is tried and tested in the form of, as we've seen before, physics making its advances through weapons. That is the most powerful nuclear fusion bomb we've ever used. Compare that down there, it's zoomed in, the bomb on Hiroshima. That's entering the upper atmosphere and getting towards space. That's how powerful it is. It is powerful enough to provide the sun. If we do this, if we get this working, we have a limitless source of clean energy. So to pick up from the last talk, actually, I don't believe that a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. I actually think that the conceptualization of things that you experience dramatically affects what you experience. There's a lot of white noise on the internet, and so if you're a content creator, you've got to think about how exactly you would stand out, as you might in any creative industry. Um, so every second, one hour of video is uploaded to YouTube, which is, is difficult to even conceive of. And Colin Powell, this is well known about him, but he had this quotation from Thucydides stuck, in fact, onto his desk. Um, of all manifestations of power, restraint impresses most men most. This quotation isn't actually from Thucydides at all, but Thucydides has got such an important role in international relations discourse that quotations like this get stuck onto his name. So Let me give you an example. So. Uh, going back 200 years, uh, there was an incredibly bad uh, rat infestation in Hong Kong. And so in order to try and deal with it, the authorities decided that uh, for everyone that bought them a rat's head, uh, they'd give them a pound, let's say. Uh, so as a result of that, uh, peasants started breeding rats, uh, killing them and bringing their heads to the authorities and, and making money out of it. The point being that the way that how you pay for something massively affects someone's behaviour. The economy. So Darwin believed that we had evolved to display facial expressions and that these expressions were present for both animals and humans. 
He believed that the facial expressions were unlearned and innate, so they were something that naturally evolved. And you can see our very grumpy little baby there, not very happy. He's saying that's an innate response, it's not learned. 